While some Chinese electric car brands have shocked the Western automotive world with their desire to launch high-end luxury SUVs and sedans, the domestic Chinese EV market is overloaded with mainstream low-cost EV cars, trucks and vans. However, our attention is captured by the likes of NIO with its battery swapping stations and little AI partner up on the dashboard, Xpeng and their Tesla baiting supercharger network and driver headrest speakers, as well as Li Shang's one SUV with a three screen digital dashboard stretching across the whole car. Luxury Chinese EV makers, if you will. But the domestic market in China is also teeming with mainstream low cost EV cars. The number of one priority it seems amongst them is to bring great value for the range delivered. And that brings us on to today's car review the Leopard CS9 EV. It comes in at just under 29,000 US dollars and drops to a hard to believe $18,500 after national and local government incentives. Now it claims to have a range of about 310 kilometers, which is just over 220 miles. But what do you get for a sub 20K electric SUV in the Chinese domestic market? Let's find out. The CS9 EV has already been on the market since 2018, a year before the Tesla Model Y. And yes, it doesn't have self-driving tech, nor is it as stylish or mind-blowingly impressive. But as a first step into EVs from a small Chinese manufacturer, it's not as bad as you might assume. Now the name of this Chinese company is Leba, which translates to cheetah, which kind of begs the question, why do they call it Leopard? And why do they spell it with two A's? Now behind this grill is where you'll find the charge points. It's a bit violent. Now, it has two charge points, obviously, and uh, you might not be familiar with them because these are the Chinese GBT standard sockets. This is the AC slow charge, and this is the DC fast charge. Now this car will charge from about 30% to 80% in around 40, 45 minutes. It's not the fastest, but it's acceptable. Now being an EV, obviously this is powered by an electric motor and it drives the front wheels. It puts out 122 metric horsepower and 260 newton meters of torque. That's good for a zero to 62 mile an hour sprint of 15.4 seconds. I mean, what do you expect? The CS9 EV is based on its petrol powered twin, the CS9, which was released in 2017. This EV model came out a year later. It weighs 1,610 kilos or 3,549 pounds, which isn't bad for a 4.3 meter long EV SUV. The Leopard CS9 EV has a single speed gearbox and a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, which help it get to its claimed 220 miles of range. Now, I said earlier that this has a zero to 62 mile an hour acceleration of 15.4 seconds. and has a top speed of 81 miles an hour. Now, it's not very fast compared to what we've become accustomed to with EVs nowadays. But then again, this is seriously cheap. The Leopard CS9 EV comes with these quite handsome five spoke dark grey 18 inch alloy rims and they're wrapped in two 1555 tyres all the way around. You have disc brakes both in the front and the back but with the front they're ventilated whilst in the rear they're solid discs. As standard it has LED daylight running lights integrated into the front headlights. Now these are halogen bulb headlights so they're not the brightest. However, I do like this chrome eyebrow here in the light cluster and the leopard branding here on the side. Now, the exterior design of the Leopard CS9 EV is not setting the world on fire. It doesn't stand out from a crowd. It's not an ugly car, but it is just a traditional SUV shaped car. And that's okay, I think. The color options for the CS 9 EV are, is not what you call extensive. There's only three color options. There's this color, which is called fruity orange. There is fantasy white and another color called dreamy blue. However, dreamy blue actually is white with just some blue wing mirrors. 
I don't know if you can call that blue. Now we'll go around and uh, talk about the exterior details of the CS9 EV. We'll start up front here. You'll see this kind of like three tier black grille and a lot of chrome, which is a favorite of Chinese car manufacturers. Now there's this chrome C shape that uh, surrounds the fog lights down here in the lower of the bumper. You'll also see this chrome bar here with the embossed leopard print with two A's, of course. And as you move around the side, there are wing mirrors with integrated indicators a chrome belt line that goes the whole length of the car with this extra bit here. Up top, you've got some uh, roof rails. So if you're the adventurous type, or you need to take a lot of stuff, you can do. And it's got this kind of darkened black window here at the back, which kind of wraps around almost Range Rover-like. And if you keep coming around the back, a bit of chrome detailing in the rear light cluster. Again, a chrome C around the rear reflectors, and then this kind of fake silverish diffuser. Now, it is a bit plasticky, but you know, for bumps and scrapes, it's probably a good thing. Like everything, more money means more options, and that's no different in the Leopard CS9 EV. In a top spec model, you can expect to get automatic window wipers, automatic headlights, folded and heated wing mirrors, auto dimming interior mirror, one touch up and down automatic windows, side and current airbags, and six speakers instead of four. And finally, an electric panoramic sunroof. The base model of the CS9 EV compared to its top of the range sibling can only be described as functional. I mean, the cabin is full of hard scratchy plastics and even the stuff that looks like soft touch plastic is, well, it's hard and scratchy. There is one place here that you can find soft touch uh, plastic and that's here on the armrest. So, if you like to drive along with your arm down here, then it doesn't feel too bad. Me, personally, I like to put my arm up here and scratchy plastic. Now, this particular model comes with a uh, black and red interior, and I really do like these front driver seats. Quite nicely bolstered, uh, one-piece integrated headrest with this kind of metal look insert really gives it a sporty feeling in here, as well as the uh, stripy kind of fake carbon fiber. Now, I'm not sure whether I like it or not. You can leave a comment down below. Tell me how you feel about it. The one positive of it is it doesn't leave fingerprints that are notoriously associated with gloss black trim. Uh, so that's definitely a plus. Now behind the multifunction steering wheel in here, you will find a full digital dial. However, it's not customizable uh, as far as I can tell, but it is bright and easy to read while you're driving. So that's a plus. Now, obviously the thing that dominates the interior of this car is this 12 inch infotainment system, and it is packed with functionality. Uh, you can of course do the normal things like Bluetooth your phone and stream your favorite tracks you or answer telephone calls um it's got radio it's got its own internal navigation system um it's also got some stats for your ev things like the battery the temperature of the battery how many amps and volts are being used how much battery you have left how much battery you're using whilst you're driving it's got voice control obviously only in chinese and then it's got Baidu Car Life, which for those that don't know, is kind of like Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Although it doesn't matter what phone you have, you just download the app where you have an iPhone or an Android, and then you can then connect your phone via USB uh, here, and you can uh, display your own map system that you like and other 
uh, apps within Baidu car life. One thing that I do really like is that even on the base model, there's a Wi-Fi hotspot. So if you take passengers on long trips, often like I do, then they can connect to the Wi-Fi and stream movies or whatever people do on long trips in the back of cars. I wouldn't know. I'm normally the one driving. Now, as we come down, you can use the the central screen to control the fan and the AC controls. There's also a hard button here to turn the AC on and off. There's obviously your uh, hazard lights, uh, front and rear windscreen, the misters. Coming down, you have a stop start engine button and opposite symmetrically, you have this 12 volt cigarette lighter. In the middle of those, you have your gear change buttons. So you have park, drive, neutral, and reverse. This I'm not sure about. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether or not it is touch, like a touch pad, like they are in Mercedes, but it definitely looks like that. Coming down, you have your parking brake and your automatic brake as well. Now, this rotary button down here, although you do most of the AC function on the screen, that's quite annoying as a lot of people talk about a lot of new cars nowadays. But what you can do is down here, if we hit the home button, we go to home. Um, there are two other buttons. One says temp and one has a fan on it. Now, if you press temp, temperature will come up and then you can use the rotary to move the temperature up and down. And the same, if you hit the fan button, you can move the fan up and down. So that's quite nice. You don't have to take your eyes off the road in order to change the AC, which is a real problem in a lot of cars which have large touchscreens today, the disappearance of physical buttons. Behind that, you've got two cup holders, then a large deep storage bin. Uh, this one is uh, full of old crisps. Like most cars, this comes with a reversing camera and parking sensors all the way around. It's so much so these days that when you jump back into a car without a reversing camera, it almost feels like you're half blindfolded. Now, there is one last surprise on the interior of the CS9 EV, and that's here in the boot. Now, I didn't even know that this car had this until I saw this which is a bit of a dig, dead giveaway. And that is underneath this floor here, if you just fold it over, there is oh, a little seat for a child. I mean, no adults are gonna sit in there. Let me have a try. Ooh. If you look at my knee space, knee space is not, is not generous. I'm about five foot six. <laughs> You can get your feet underneath the seat in front, which um, means your feet are somewhat comfortable, but I wouldn't suggest this for anybody over three feet tall. The, the Leopard CS9 EV, is, it's got brake regeneration, but I mean, at low speeds, it makes the brakes quite grabby, like that. Uh, it's really hard to control at low speeds, and at higher speeds, they tend to feel a little bit squidgy. There's not a lot of, um, you don't have a lot of confidence in the brakes, to be honest with you. Now, the steering, obviously, it's an SUV. Um, it doesn't have a lot of feedback and it's quite light, but that's quite typical of Chinese cars. Um, it does make it pretty easy to wield around a car park though. The car picks up from a standstill with the thrust that we're getting used to with EVs nowadays. Um, it's not lightning quick. With 122 metric horsepower and 260 newton meters of torque, has a claim zero to 60 of 15.5 seconds, 15.4 seconds. The CS9 EV has two modes, uh, has a sport mode and it has an eco mode. Uh, the eco mode seems to automatically turn on uh, when the battery gets low. Now the ride of the CS9 EV is quite comfortable probably because of that 55 sidewall tire and it offers you know quite a lot of cushioning on the road it does make handling in the corners feel you know less connected and it gives it a bit of body roll but then again this is a front wheel drive suv it's not a track lapping monster 
And I mean, at the end of the day, this car is all about value for money. I mean, six seats, 220 miles, 18 and a half grand. I mean, you can't really go wrong. When Tesla's claiming the Model 3 is, you know, the next EV for the people. Yeah, people with 35 grand, people with $40,000. This is like, it's like saying like everybody goes out and buys a BMW 3 Series. It's just not true. We need cheaper EVs and China may be able to offer us cheaper alternatives to what we currently have on sale. It's not fast. It doesn't handle dynamically. The steering is vague and the brakes aren't really that progressive. But it's easy to list the things this small EV SUV doesn't do well. It's easy to discount this car, especially when we are surrounded by news of the next fastest lap battering super EV or next age technology stuff car. When watching reviews or reading articles, we don't fully take into account the price of these hallowed EVs. We care more about who hits 60 miles an hour in the lowest time and which one can self-drive to the office and back in rush hour. Some of us love the hype and some of us love to hate it. But the average person hasn't been driving a Ferrari or Lamborghini over the last few decades. They drove Fords, Chevys, Volvos and other mainstream cars. While a CS9 EV is maybe not that exciting, it hits a lot of key areas for the market it's intended for. It's staggeringly good value for what it is. 220 miles of range, seats five plus one, a decent sized boot, a solid infotainment system with all the bells and whistles we've come to expect. In reality, it's a sub 20K electric SUV that provides the mainstream Chinese the ability to buy and use an electric car. It's not some cheap stripped out EV city car that can barely hit 100 miles of range. For intent and purposes, it's a real alternative to petrol powered small SUVs without the huge EV tax we've become accustomed to. It's comfortable, decent ranged, good family size SUV for a competitive price that just happens to be electric. These kinds of cars are the reason why in mainland China EVs are not some novelty. They are a realistic proposition when car buying. A second hand CS9 EV with less than a thousand miles on the clock can be had for less than $9,800. If nothing else, the simple takeaway from this EV is fantastic value everywhere.